next video in Ryburn series. And we just got the tag off this morning, and so I gave her a long break during the heat of the day. And we're coming back to work tonight, and we're going to work on haltering. What are you doing, Mary? exactly that but I had it tied onto the end of the stick but I think she's graduated from that. Good girl. So I find this to be a pretty easy stress-free way to get the halter on for the first time because uh, when you bring it under the neck and you kind of flip it around that's like another step that you have to get them used to is your hand and the halter going under their neck and then appearing in their eye on the opposite side and that might be a little more nerve-wracking for some horses. So I'm going to see if this method works for her. It certainly worked for my last tour, so. And also that morning, before I got the tag off, I also allowed her to sniff the halter and got her used to the feeling of the ropes moving around on her face. So here I'm just repeating that to make sure she's comfortable with it. she will learn to halter like a normal horse eventually, but what's good to you? So I'm not going to try and hold her here. She doesn't really understand that pressure yet, so. So I eventually got it tied on and she was a really good girl. She did a good job. So I just took some photos of her with it on and then took it off and that was our session for the evening. Hey everyone, today we're going to be doing some desensitizing to grooming tools at Liberty because I haven't taught her to lead yet as her pin is pretty muddy. I didn't end up using a whole lot of these clips because they're not really entertaining, nothing super educational or exciting happened, but she did learn how to be brushed and have her mane brushed through and she did a really good job with that. One of my favorite moments with new Mustangs is being able to brush them for the first time. It sounds like such a mundane thing, but it's really nice when they trust you to do that. And there's something symbolic about watching all that dust from years on the range and in holding pins just fly off of their coats. So I got the halter on the same way I did yesterday, and today I'm going to try something new. Um, this pin, as you can see, is pretty muddy. There's a huge wet spot right here, and I'm really not uh, excited about the idea of halter training in the mud. And so I always want to do everything I can to prevent horses from having explosive fear reactions to things. And so one method I heard about was um, using target training to teach them to lead for the first time. Um, now I have taught domesticated horses to target train, but I've never taught it to a new Mustang. So it's going to be a learning experience for both of us. She currently will not take these um, soaked alfalfa pellets out of my hand. So we're going to try using this feed pan. So target training is where you put a stick with something on the end. Uh, I have a tail bag <laughs> in front of their nose and you reward them touching it. And then you can work up to leading them with it and lunging with them with it and whatever you want. I'm just going to see if she'll pay any attention to this at all. She is really not concerned about it. Good. So I kind of brought the stick to her mouth, but I'm going to see if she'll take that alfalfa instead of looking at me. So I repeated that very same step a few times and really got her to understand that touching the target gets her a reward. And so that way I could start holding the target a little bit farther away from her and asking her to take steps towards it to get her reward. She did a really good job with that. Later that evening, I did a little more work on targeting and I set up sort of a triangle of buckets so that she could lead around in a circle by following the target. Little 
I began introducing the lead rope. First, I wanted to get her used to the sound of the clip. Right, It was still too muddy to actually teach her to lead, so I spent a lot of time doing this repetitive stuff, eventually turning off the camera and just focusing on training. I wanted to make sure she was 100% ready for when I did clip the lead rope on for the first time to make sure it would be a good and uneventful experience. Unfortunately, later in the session, she had a couple spooks that really started to set back her confidence with the lead rope. They weren't huge spooks, but because I ran out of time, I wasn't able to end on the best note possible for her. So while it wasn't a traumatic experience by any means, it did start to set back her confidence with the lead rope. On this day, because it was still too muddy to teach her to lead, I decided to use this target stick to get her used to touch further down on her body. I don't usually like to go past their shoulder until I have them altered in leading. I was not leaving the rope halter on her unattended, I was just putting it on before a session and taking it off right after so she could get used to wearing it. But she's being a really good girl. girl. Another thing I wanted to work on is a hindquarter yield at liberty. She already responded really well to my body hey. language so this was super easy to teach. something from her and targeting her hindquarters lets her know that want this, I want to, her to move them away from the stick. Good girl. Very smart. It's really neat to look back on these videos and see the difference in her expression from then to now. She never makes faces like that these days. Her shoulder stops moving and her hind quarters keep moving. Got a lot of dry, dead hair that's just sitting on the top of her coat. It's really unhealthy and gross looking hair. So I'm glad she's shedding it out and hopefully I can brush it all off soon. Just now, I've been able to get her to take one step back at a time, and I'm going to see if I can replicate it and possibly turn it into more steps. So 
So just start like this. Back. Back. Yay! And just really give her a big release when she gets the right answer. So I'm not sure specifically what happened that made her start to go backwards, although the session where I introduced the lead rope for the first time and had to end on a less than ideal note definitely didn't help, and I think it happened again a couple times. I wasn't able to end on the best note possible, and she really started to go backwards, and she didn't even want me to halter her. I stopped filming because I was just repeating the same steps I did to introduce the halter for the first time as if it was brand new but I really wasn't making much progress at all. So on this day, I just did some target training to sort of refresh her mind a little. Alrighty, so we had a bit of a setback and for a few days, I didn't really film because there wasn't much new to film. Um, she wasn't letting me halt to her. She wasn't even really wanting me to touch her. And for a day, I could barely even touch her left side. Um, so earlier I came out here and I did a little more target training and I ended up being able to touch her left side again. And just now, she's been totally relaxed, and I was able to just stroke her and brush her just like normal again, as if we never had a setback. So I'm going to use the target stick to get her used to the halter being on the left side of her face again, and to sort of kind of condition it so that she forms more positive associations with it. This is basically the only way I can get the halter even on her left side without using any force or anything. So I was basically using the target stick as my cue to ask her to present her left side to me and to the halter. And I wasn't forcing her because if she wanted to just go wander off and eat some hay, she was absolutely welcome to do that. It wasn't really working, so on this day I decided to try another approach and see if my other horse, Prince, could give her some confidence. He can be remarkably grumpy when I'm spending time with another horse and not with him. He actually spent a lot of time outside of Wyvern's fence while I was working with her begging for attention. And of course I gave him plenty of attention in his own time and not in the middle of a training session I with think Wyvern. I a bit jealous, but hopefully this will be a good experience for Wyvern to see me interacting with another horse and realizing that I can halt her, I can lead him, I can um, ask him to do stuff and that I'm not going to hurt him. He's like, are you okay? <laughs> Stop licking me, weirdo. He's like, I am so over you. I'll kick my horse rider. <laughs> You're all the way up there. So it's been a little while. I've been trying a lot of things with her. A lot of the same things, a lot of different things, and just seeing what works for her. And she is very, very adamant that I do not put the halter on the face. But I'm trying something new that I really think might work with her, which is self-haltering, or sort of partially self-haltering. I'm not sure if this exactly counts. Um, but it's basically where you should just be able to hold the halter up. You should just be able to hold the halter up, and they put their own face in it, and then you can just tie it yourself and um, it makes it a less scary experience for them because horses, as flight animals, they're gonna be less scared of something that they feel like they have control over. And if it's her, um, you know, choosing to put her head in the halter and doing it herself, hopefully she'll be less scared of it. I think it's working so far. And so we're just gonna see. Good girl. And that's about where we're at right now. Interestingly enough, she was actually never ear shy at all, and after touching her ears with the rope many times, I eventually just tried touching them with my hands and she was perfect. She didn't mind it at all. Today 
I'm going to be demonstrating how to catch yourself a real wild Mustang. So just watch this. Bye, Vern. So I use this method of just tucking the end of the rope underneath the nose band to get her used to wearing the halter while tying it was still too scary for her. I started filming here because I just adored her expression. She went from looking angry when I pulled the halter out to actually leaving her hay when I called her name and held the halter up and willingly letting me put her head in the halter and even sometimes helping me by lowering her head and she was just doing an amazing job. It was really an incredible change. So of course it was too loose, so I tightened it up after that. I then got back to work on the lead rope after giving her a small break. She was not super happy about it, but she warmed up to it with time. Am I in your nose hole? How dare it? How rude! The audacity! So I just did a bunch more of this stuff and getting her used to the clip again before moving on to clipping it on. So I eventually did get it clipped on. She was really, really good. She was super calm about it. No reaction whatsoever. And then I just started work on walking around just using my body language. And she was really good. I hadn't applied any pressure on the lead rope at this point. And so I started work on my plan, which was to use targeting to teach her how to lead. And she was doing great in the beginning. She pulls back, are you going to hold on? Yes, obviously. Okay. Wyvern needs to know how to respond to pressure for the, her own safety and the safety of everyone around her. Although I was hoping she wouldn't pull back, my plan was always to hold on in case she did. I think all horses should know how to respond to pressure, if at the very least for emergency situations only. I know this method of teaching horses to lead using a target is a bit unconventional, but I've seen it done before and I know it can work. It was just a matter of whether I could do it right. So this is where I think I went wrong. What I could have done looking back on the videos is apply a gentle bump of pressure and then release and then ask her to touch the target and move forward and then she comes to realize over time that that gentle bump of pressure means I'm about to ask her to move forward and she eventually moves forward on her own. That way that I'm actually teaching her how to respond to pressure in a gentle way instead of her pulling back and then freaking out and then having to learn kind of on her own and not really having my guidance and support through it all. That's not really my preferred way to train horses by just throwing them into the deep end and kind of making them figure it out on their own. That's not really how I like to do things. I like to set them up for success and try and help them and guide them through whatever I'm asking them to do and try and prepare them beforehand. But you have to remember this is a wild animal I'm working with and sometimes things go wrong and 
You have to also remember that horses' natural response to pressure is going to be to brace against it. They are flight animals after all. They're going to try and run from whatever scares them. And if you haven't taught them what pressure means, they're going to feel trapped. They're going to feel like they can't escape. And they're prone to having these huge explosions, which are really hard to avoid sometimes. And so that's what ended up happening, unfortunately. It's not what I hoped for. I was pretty disappointed. But I know that I did my best, and I tried to make it a good experience. I tried to set her up for success. And I'm not going to beat myself up for my mistakes. Stuff happens with horses. And maybe in the future I'll be able to teach a horse to lead completely uneventfully. And that will be a great achievement. But it did not happen with Wyvern. And that's not the worst thing in the world. She still learned. She didn't get hurt. I didn't get hurt. And she eventually learned how to lead safely and calmly. Never developed a bolting problem or anything of the sort. And she's doing a great job to this day. So on with the videos. You can see she was hesitant to put that one leg down. Did you forget she was feisty or? <laughs> but she walked it off. She must have just taken a couple sore steps and then realized that she was fine and she wasn't I injured. hanging on. However, I still felt absolutely awful about what happened. And to calm her down, I went back to target training as well as to assess if there was any actual damage to her hind leg, which there was not. She was perfectly fine. She just needed to walk it off. What? My tree pouch. Your tree pouch? <laughs> yeah, she looks just fine. I'm sure she just like banged her shin and it hurt for a minute. No, I don't think she did. See if you can get one step, one good step, right quick. And yes, it is a bit frustrating to watch myself make the same mistake again and again, but at least I've learned something. And to be honest, maybe that method wouldn't have worked after all. Maybe it wouldn't have really taught her what yeah, pressure meant. Better. Maybe at some point she had to have some kind of explosion to, to Don't let her flip, realize please. what pressure means and how to respond to it. So maybe it's best that it happened with me in an enclosed area with a 30-foot lunge line to keep hold of her. And yes, that one corner was a little slippier than I thought. It, I really thought it had dried up more than it actually had, but it wasn't too bad. I switched tactics here and went for a hindquarter yield, which works with some horses really well depending on how you do it. Sometimes you can sort of put together steps from yielding their hindquarters into moving forward. It kind of works to unstick their feet and get them thinking about moving instead of just standing still and bracing against the pressure. The tactic that ended up working was holding steady pressure as she go. moves around until she starts to come off the pressure by coming towards me and realizes that that's exactly what halter pressure means. I was giving her lots of breaks and making sure to reassure her between all of the clips. There you 
go, that's better. Now I'm just gonna reach through and smack her on the butt so she goes into you. I started clearing all the buckets and everything out so we had a good space to work in. Since it was clear my first tactic was not working. By staying towards her hind end and really fixating on it, I was able to get her to yield it away from me and that really helped her to understand how to respond to the pressure. She also needs to know how to stop when I ask and not go too far into my space. And also by staying at her hip, I was able to keep her from flipping around. Yay. <laughs> it's got some hops. Yeah, I was gonna say it'll be you constantly dropping it to hold on with two hands. Hey, girl. Yeah, I already did. Yeah, like that. Hey, girl. Nice. Almost, you almost had her. See if you can walk around the butt. Do you think you can do that? Never mind. Yeah. There you go. She's got it that way. It's the other way that's still a little sticky. Yeah.
So as I was finding a good note to end on, I started zigzagging her back and forth, working up towards getting her to move out in a straight line without any drama or any running away and wandering off before starting to move forward. I want her to just feel the pressure and move forward right away, and zigzagging is a good way to work up to doing that. You happy? Yeah. <laughs> My friend's like, no. She did really, really good with that, so I spent a lot of time just hanging out, petting on her, and eventually I started messing with the halter, getting her used to that feeling of having hands on the halter a little better, and then just took it right off. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take this video as a reminder that mustang training is not always smooth sailing. Even if you do the best you can to prepare your horse, sometimes things can still go wrong. These are wild animals after all. And so I always strive to show the bad along with the good and always remind people that nothing's going to go perfect all the time. So here you go. Enjoy some slow-mo wild mustang taming.